16 this morning. We started this last week. Romans 16, 25. I'm going to read the verse again and uh, continue with it this morning. And what you have here, what, what you have here is a just a powerful statement in this verse, man. These three verses is one sentence. It, it really shows you what God is, is, is about, what He's doing. What I'm about to read you, when you when you understand this, that it's according to the commandment bill of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. When you understand this, where this is coming from, under whose authority it's, it's coming from, boy, it, it really says a lot. Paul says, he says, now to him, that he is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets here it is according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. I told you last week, man, that's a that's a that's a that's a sentence right there. Paul said more in that one sentence than maybe any man has ever said in, in a whole lifetime. And what he's talking about here, and we're going to continue to look at this, he's talking about God's power to establish us in the faith, in life and the faith and everything. And he tells us that this is all according to three things. I'll write them down up here. We're going to talk about them this morning. But he says, he says, number one, God's power to establish you is according to my gospel or the gospel of Paul. Now, we're going to, we're going to say some things about this. Did you realize the average preacher today don't even know there's a difference between Paul and Peter's gospel? Yeah, you're right. And now he, he says the second thing is it's according to the revelation of the mystery. Been here 2,000 years, most people still don't know it. Revelation of the mystery. Stewards. Paul said we are stewards of the mysteries of God. People today, they, they, they want a preacher to be everything except what God called him to be. A steward of God's mysteries. He said we are ministers of Christ. Uh, what that means, a minister of Christ doesn't mean they're your minister. They're His minister. To administer the things that He's given us. And that's what He's talking about. Now He says, uh, I'm not trying to get out of being your servant. I'll gladly serve you. <laughs> I like what Paul said. He said, though I'll be free from all you men, yet I'll make myself the servant of all. And you see, I mean, these are things that, that we, that's the law of Christ in us. But the revelation of the mystery and the scriptures, the scriptures of the prophets. Now he says that this is all according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. You realize what I just gave you is the entire book that you hold in your hand. That's, the, that's your King James Bible. And God, God made this known to all nations for the obedience of faith. And now think about the men who've got the nerves and the guts to correct it without fear. Amen. The, man who, the men who's got the guts to stand up and not study it, just get a little story and, and you know, and tell people about it and think that they've done something. Listen, man, do you think God's going to hold these people guiltless in that day? The, this, this is according to His command. This has nothing to do with me. This has nothing to do with... This is God's commandment made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. And so you know what man does? Naturally, he ignores it. It's what he always does. God, God gave a law in the Old Testament. They wrote that law, so He gave them laws concerning sacrifice. You know what they did? They started just offering him sacrifice. God said, who required this of your hands? He said, I'm, I'm up to my eyeballs in the fat of fed beasts. And he said, when your fathers came out of Egypt, I didn't 
command them concerning sacrifice. He said, I told them to keep my commandments and walk in my ways. Yeah, yeah. And now here's man. God's given us the once and for all sacrifice. Now what do they want to do? They want to try to live under the law. Yeah. They always do the opposite of what God. And you, you won't understand it unless you understand there's a spirit behind the scenes working these things. Yep. And until you understand Satan, man, and what he's doing, people are just going to keep blindly following things that appear to be righteous that are not. And what, what Paul's talking about here, uh, man, man ignores it. They become vain in their imaginations. Their foolish hearts become darkened. They profess themselves to be wise and become as fools, and they end up changing the truth of God into a lie. America's in the shape she's in today. You read Romans chapter 1, we may look at it here in a little bit, but America's in the shape she's in today. We're not falling. We're not going to fall. America is in apostasy. Yeah. She's up to here in apostasy. Exactly. You say, how do you know? I read Romans chapter 1. When they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but become vain in their imagination. Their foolish hearts were darkened, professing themselves to be wise and become as fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man. And, and, and what, what's the result of that is sexual uncleanness, homosexuality, and reprobate minds. That's where America is. You realize, I mean, the Republican Party, man, they've embraced homosexuality. Oh, yeah. And you, you know, the Republican Party, they're still right of the Democrats, <laughs> but they're where the Democrats were 30 years ago. Yep. The Democrats have went so far left, you can't even imagine it, and the Republicans that used to be over here have come to here, yep. and the Republican Party, 15, 20 years from now, they'll accept transgenders. Once the Democrats start accepting bestiality, man's corrupting. Amen. Bad. Amen. And it, it, it's not, it has nothing to do with us not being religious. It has nothing to do with any of these things. Man has ignored the commandment of the everlasting God. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it has to do with. Now, Paul, listen, I'm not overstating anything. You go tell the average preacher of any denomination, chap. See if I'm lying to you. Just go out in the community. Go, go, go to the First Baptist Church. Go, go to any denomination you want to and tell them that Paul's gospel and Peter's gospel are different and they'll call you a heretic. Yep. They'll call you the heretic. Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized. I don't have the guts to preach that, Gary. <laughs> I, don't have to, I don't have the guts to preach that gospel. Peter did. You know what Paul said, 1 Corinthians 1, 17? He said, Christ sent me not to baptize. You say, you say well, Peter, he wasn't sent. Yeah, he was sent to baptize. I'll give you the scriptures. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore into all the world, baptizing them. Isn't that what he said? Yeah. Were they sent to baptize? What about Mark 16, 15? Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Yeah. And these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay their hands on the sick. They shall recover. If they take up serpents and they bite them. That, are those signs following us? No. You know what people do? They just take and they pick and choose whatever they want. God can take his, ever, his commandment and go somewhere with it. We're just going to pick and choose what we want. <laughs> and if it don't fit, listen, man, if, if these signs follow a man that believe, we like that. We like that verse. Mm -hmm. Repent and be baptized. We like it. Well, did you repent and get baptized? Yeah. Did you speak in tongues? And Are you able to heal people? No. Well, then evidently something's wrong. Because under this program, those signs follow them that believe. Yeah. Amen? Under, the, under Paul's gospel, they don't. Right. John the Baptist was sent to baptize. Uh -huh. John chapter 1, he said, He that sent me to baptize. The twelve were sent to baptize. Matthew 28, Mark 16. Peter knew what he was 
preaching. Just because the man down at the university or the seminary don't know the difference. And then they want to accuse Peter of being ignorant. Oh, Peter didn't understand the nature of the kingdom. He understood it better than you. He was handpicked by the Lord, man. Yeah. And he was the head of the twelve. He knew what he was preaching in Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized. You have to understand, these men were not preaching the cross as good news, Bill. Amen. Right. They were preaching the cross as a murder indictment against Israel. Mm -hmm. Acts 2, Acts 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. They were preaching the cross as a murder indictment. And said, this, he, he, he said, you've taken the Lord, who was approved of God in your sight, and you've taken Him and with wicked hands slain Him, hung Him on the tree. Repent! And be baptized. Yes. Yes. That was their gospel. Mm -hmm. Paul's the first one to preach the gospel as good news. Look over in uh, Galatians. I'll show you this. I know you know the verse. I know the verse. And every time I read it, it sinks in a little bit harder. Sinks in a little bit more. Galatians 1.10, 1 11. But I certify you. Brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's Paul's gospel. Yes, sir. He received the revelation about the cross and the burial and the resurrection of Christ that Peter, James, and John didn't know. They didn't understand. This revelation was given to Paul. Look over in 1 Timothy. Like, like I said, man, the world, the world lies in heresy, not me. And we're, we're here, man. We'll, we'll be a beacon of light on, on this hill. And you people be a beacon of light in this community. But I'll tell you right now, I know what Paul said. What, what we're doing right now is we're writing these things on your heart. Ye are the epistles of Christ, known and read of all men. And if you go out to this world and if your gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. And there's nothing we can do about these things, folks. But God is not playing games with what He's made known and what He's revealed to man. And, and what Paul says here in 1 Timothy, this is, this is amazing. Look at verse number 3. He tells you to pray for all men. Why? For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. This is our mission statement. This is my mission statement, verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved. And to come unto, a, not unto the knowledge of the truth. That's God's will. Is that all men be saved and come unto a knowledge of the truth. Now look at what he says. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. Who gave himself a ransom for who? All. To be testified in due time. Peter, James, and John didn't know it. When he's sitting there, John followed him all the way to Calvary. John didn't understand when he looked at him that he was dying for all men. Right. He didn't know that. When, when he rose from the dead, Peter, James, and John didn't understand it. But it was he gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Verse 7, Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. It was Paul who was called by Jesus Christ yeah. and given this revelation that Christ had given his life a ransom for all men to be testified in due time. And it's only in Paul's gospel that we read these things and Paul said that it's according to his gospel that God's going to establish us. Amen. Not Peter. Amen? Yeah, right. The second thing, the mystery. Go find, you, you find someone that can even name the mysteries of the New Testament. And you, you might find one out of a thousand. I mean, somebody that can't understand, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to assert authority over the man, but to be in silence. Probably don't know much about the mysteries. <laughs> and so, I mean, if you can't understand common third grade English, and I, I tell you, I, I, I love you. I, I love you, women. You've got your place, and we've got our place. 
And, and what's happening in America is people don't understand that Satan has systematically broken down God's structure so that he can get an open door and a foothold into these things. Yep, right. When you read 1 Timothy chapter 2, the Apostle Paul uh, uh, talking there about uh, about women learning, uh, being under subjection, he said, "For the woman was, or Adam was first formed, then the woman, and she being deceived, Adam was not deceived. The woman was deceived, and Satan came at the man through the woman. And so, what Paul's saying here is that women are a weaker vessel. God made them more emotional than men." for the task that He created them to do. But this makes them more susceptible to, to, to the emotional things that Satan's going to come at, and it makes them more susceptible to deception. This is why Paul says, notwithstanding she shall be saved in childbearing. Paul's talking about in their childbearing years. They'll be saved from this satanic deception if, if what? If they are submitted unto their husbands in silence and they continue in the faith and all these things. But what Satan has done in America, Gary, is he's broken that down. Yeah. Yeah. And now you, you've got, listen, man, you, you, when I, you know what the Pentecostal church is? It's a church of women. Yeah. Yeah. And the only men that go to these churches are men that's drugged there by their wives. You show me a Pentecostal household and I'll show you a house that's ran by a woman. Yeah, yeah. You're right. And then they get there and I'm not saying they ain't speaking in tongues. I'm not saying that they ain't passing out film and stuff. What I'm telling you is it ain't of God. Yeah, sure. There's more spirits in this world than, 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 than God's spirit. God is a spirit. Not spirit. Not the spirit. God is a spirit. There's more than one. And Paul said, if you receive a spirit which ye have not received. And these people go to church and they beg and snot and snort and beg for hours to get a spirit that God promised he would give them freely by faith in his son. And brother, they get it. Yep, yep. And I, I listen, man, we're, we're not talking about this goofy nonsense going out. God has revealed mysteries to us. Yes. The mystery of Israel's blindness, the mystery of the rapture, the, the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of godliness, the mystery of Babylon and the great, the mother of harlots. Yeah. you got the mystery of His will in Ephesians, the mystery of the body of Christ. You've got all these mysteries that God has revealed for the purpose of establishing us. And one in a thousand preachers in America today couldn't name them. That's sad. Because I'll tell you, the first one you come to in Paul's letter is the mystery of Israel's blindness. Yeah. Paul said if you're ignorant of that one, it forces you to be wise in your own conceits. And we know what being wise in our own conceits leads to. I done told you this morning, Romans chapter 1. Yeah, I mean, Romans 1, 20 through 28, that's the real diagnosis of America's real problem. It's not, America's real problem has nothing to do with anything except a violation of this. Mm. I promise you, man, this is the diagnosis of America's real They profess that they know God, but they don't know Him. They change the glory of God into an image made like an incorruptible man. Yeah. Yeah. And now that they're filled up with sexual immorality, homosexuality, and reprobation. Because they're worshiping God here instead of from here. This was made known by God for our obedience to the faith. But man, when they put this away, or they put an ESV or an NIV or something in its place, they're worshiping God in their own conceits. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They become vain in their imagination. The scriptures of the prophets. Good luck. And let, let, let me tell you something. If what you're getting on the prophets comes from Hal Lindsey or John Hagee, I feel for you. Because that man just as blind as a bat flying back. You, you take John Hagee, he thinks he's doing something good for Israel today. He, he thinks he's fulfilling prophecy by sending that Jew home. You know what? If you're going to spend money on that Jew, you need to spend money on getting him the gospel of the grace of God. Because you send that Jew home to the promised land, you're sending him to a slaughter. And if anybody's read the prophets, they should know this. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yep. That Jew's going home to their slaughter right now. Yep. God's going to gather them and cause them to pass under His rod. Right. And, and if you want to save that Jew and spare that true Jew, the time of Jacob's trouble, you need to get him the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. And people don't under, you know, people run around today with their little sayings, and if you've said this, I'm sorry, because I've read it, and I've I probably even said it a time or two, you know, when I was young. But the Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth, you know. I hear people say that. That just proves to me they haven't made it past the cover. <laughs> Zechariah chapter 6. Saw two brass mountains, Gary. Yeah. And chariots coming out from between those mountains, and one chariot had black horses and they went toward the north country and they were followed by chariots with white horses and then there were gristled and bay horses and the gristled ones went toward the south country and the bay horses went throughout the earth and God said these that go to the north they quieted my spirit. That's just a little basic instruction before leaving earth. I just want you to know that. Yeah. You kidding me? Matthew, Matthew chapter 13 the mysteries of the kingdom Zechariah chapter 2, Zechariah chapter These are not basic instructions, folks. And it's not God's love letter to you either. <laughs> God told Isaiah, He sent Isaiah out. He said, he said, Here am I, send me. And God said, Go. Speak to this people. Give them eyes that can't see, ears that can't hear, and make their hearts gross. He said, he said Make their heart wax gross, lest they should see, hear, and be converted, and I should heal them. He sent Isaiah with, the, with the, the, the specific ministry of blinding, dulling the ear, and making the people's hearts grow. And, and Isaiah said, how long, Lord? He said, till the city be wasted without an habit. Mm. Wow. Yeah. God's love letter. Yeah. Okay. That, that's, that's, that's America. That's goofy Americans, man. God gave us a book, and God said, any man that don't receive the love of this book is going to get strong delusions from him. Amen? And so, folks, we were warned about this. Get 1 Timothy chapter 4. Give me just a few minutes here. I want, I want to talk a little bit about Paul's gospel this morning. But I want to show you this. We were warned, folks, time and time again in the New Testament that apostasy was coming. The church age is going to end in apostasy. Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. 2, Tim or that 2 Thessalonians, 2 Timothy chapter 3, he said, evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, take to themselves teachers having itching ears. Yeah. What are we supposed to do? Look at 1 Timothy 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. That means they speak lies under the disguise of religious men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's talking about here. Their conscience is seared. They don't take the book serious. They don't take you serious. They don't care about your family. Their conscience is seared. They'll correct the book. They'll twist it. They'll even have church without it if you let them. That's right. They don't care. They're there to collect a paycheck. That's right. And Paul, Paul says, he, he says, look man, this is what's coming. What are we to do? Verse number six, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things. Okay. Verse number seven, refuse profane and old wives' fables. Okay. <laughs> Exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Okay. Look down at verse uh, 11. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth. Be thou an example of the believers in word, conversation, charity, and spirit, and faith, and purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Look at verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. 
Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. He's not talking about salvation from hell. He's talking about salvation from the deception that's coming in the latter times. And he gave us very specific instruction on what we are to do to save ourselves during the apostasy. Well, you're living in it, man. Yeah. And the church don't need anything more than what Paul just said. You understand? We need, there's things we are to refuse. There's things we are to do. We are to meditate and give ourselves wholly to these things. You can't find good doctrine, folks, in, in nine out of ten churches anymore. I'm not lying to you. I'm not pounding this same thing. I'm telling you the truth. And people are so reprobate concerning the faith today, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm excited about what's going on here. I truly am. Amen. The things God's showing me, the, the way that He brought us together and the things that He's showing me over in my study and the way you people are receiving it, I'm excited about what God may do here. Amen. But I, 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 I could care less about what's going on in the, in the hell holes called churches anywhere else. Because America's in the spiritual condition she's in for, for a reason. Sure. Yep. And if all these churches that, that are filled up, running forward 500, 600, 700, if they were doing what they were supposed to be doing, America wouldn't be in the spiritual darkness she's in. And that's just the truth of it. And, and so, we're going to begin real quick. I want to show you a few things. Come to Romans chapter 1. Over the next week or two, we're going to look at Paul's gospel. You have to understand Paul's, what, what Paul's gospel is about, what, what it's given to us for. People look at Calvary, and we talked a little bit about this in Sunday school, but people look at Calvary as just the forgiveness of sins, and it's much more than that, what Christ accomplished at the cross. And that's what Paul's going to show you all the way through Romans chapter 1 through 7. Then in chapter 8, he, he shows you how you are to live now. The death of Christ means you're dead to a few things, folks. And if you don't understand your relationship to these things, you'll never... You, Paul tells, When Paul preaches overcoming sin in Romans chapter 6 and Romans chapter 7, he don't tell you what to do. He tells you what to know. You look at his favorite word in Romans 6 and 7, know ye not, knowing this, Knowing that, know ye not, knowing this also, what he's doing is he's showing your, you your relationship to sin, your relationship to the flesh, and your relationship to the law. And a man that does not understand his relationship to these three things will never overcome sin. I didn't say he would quit drinking. We got, we got to get that stuff out of our head. Because the fundamentalist man, they, 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 they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't cuss, they don't do any of that stuff, but their churches are full of envy, strife, sedition, heresy, wrath, yeah. pride. Yeah. Those are just as much the works of the flesh as fornication, adultery, drunkenness, revelings. Amen. They are just as fleshly as the next guy. But they set up this standard of righteousness that they live according, that they live by, and therefore they look good in the eyes of man. But somebody that can discern these things knows they're a joke. And that's all they are is a joke. They don't have any, a, a, a brother falls, they don't go restore him. Let me tell you something, man. Me and the devil went to hell and back about five years ago. And I didn't have one of these brothers, Gary, come and try to restore me or help me. But as soon as I stumbled and as soon as I fall, they all turned their back on me. I don't want nothing to do with it. That's a bunch of proud, egotistical, religious 
the things that are in my heart. Yeah. And I've prayed about it. God, God has opened my eyes to these things about how we overcome sin. We overcome sin through the life of His Son. Yes, but we can't overcome these things by the life of His Son until we first understand what His death accomplished. And this is what Paul's talking about in Romans. If you look there in verse 16 and 17, he says, I'm not at verse chapter 1. He says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Mm -hmm. To everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now you have to understand this, this letter is written to save people. You look back there in verse 7, he says, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So this, God, this, this, this record of the gospel is written to people that are already saved. And he tells you in verse 11 and 12 that it's to establish now. And Paul at the end of this book says, To him that is of a power to establish you according to my gospel. And so this, this book of Romans is written to get us established in the gospel. And you have to understand, folks, that everything you need, everything we need, is through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Nothing more. Nothing less. Nothing more, nothing less. We looked a little bit. Paul uses these two words in Colossians 2, 7. And we'll, we'll talk about this when we get to the judgment seat of Christ more also. But he says, rooted and built up. Now he, he uses these in, uh, he uses both of these analogies in first year God's husbandry, year God's building. You see? And now he uses both of these words in Colossians, rooted and built up in him. And what we have to understand, folks, is we, are, we have to be rooted in the death of Christ before we can ever be built up in His life. And this is what Romans is about, man. You, you think about a, a root. A seed goes into the ground and what? Dies. Then it germinates and takes root in the earth. And what Paul's showing us here, listen, a man cannot know and receive all that Christ has given him in his life until he's first established in his death. You know what you're going to do? You're going to keep trying. You're going to keep doing your best. You're going to keep trying to do what you want. And you've got to understand you're dead. And, and what Paul's showing us here in Romans, in Romans chapter 1 through 7, he's showing us all of our new relationships that come as a result of Calvary. And I'm telling you, folks, I'm, what I'm telling you is the truth. And this is why Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 that he had suffered the loss of all things. I'll quote that verse until the day I die, man. That's important stuff. Yeah, yeah. Paul said, We are the circumcision which worship God where? In spirit. And rejoice in who? Christ Jesus, having no confidence in the flesh. I don't have any confidence in this thing. Amen? Paul, Paul said we have no confidence in the flesh. He said, if any man think he hath whereof to glory in his flesh, I more. Mm. You don't want to get in a, in, a, in a religious debate with Paul. He'll, he'll mop the floor with you. <laughs> and you know what he said? It's all done. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I've suffered the loss of all of it for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. He said, by whom he said, he said, and do count it all but dumb that I may win Christ and be found in him. Now this ain't talking about your, your righteousness you get in the moment you get saved. What Paul's talking about is he suffered the lot that he could discover himself in Christ. Is what he's talking about, the, the, the eyes of the understanding being opened to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. People hear that they're in Christ. But people have not found themselves in Christ, Gary. And so they, they don't truly have this righteousness of God that comes by faith through Jesus Christ. And that I may know Him. And you've got to understand these things about our relationships. Look in Romans 5. Let me show you these. 
Folks, this, this, this is going to be some good stuff, I promise you. you wrote Romans, Romans is the greatest document the world's ever laid eyes on. Paul's entire epistles are the greatest, I mean, just the greatest things on earth. But in Romans 5, 1, Paul shows you your new relationship to God. You know, you, you know what goes on in churches today? Preachers get up and they absolutely keep people terrified and, and just, they keep them under the wrath of God. Look at what Paul said, Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, did you believe in Christ? Therefore, being justified by faith, what's your relationship with God now? We have peace with God Amen. through our Lord Jesus Christ. You say, what if tomorrow through Jesus Christ? When you get up tomorrow, that will still be true. He will have still die on the cross. But what if I... How is, how is anything you're going to do tomorrow erase what he did, Bill? Amen. Yeah. Amen. We have peace with God. Amen. And not only that, but verse 2 says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our relationship with God. We have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ and by Jesus Christ we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. We stand in the grace of God by faith. By faith. You have to understand this relationship. You, you have peace with Him. Nothing can change that. And you have access to His grace by faith. That's your new relationship with God. Alright? Look at what he says in Romans 6 too. Now we start talking about overcoming sin. Look, look, look at verse 3. See it? Know ye not? Look down at verse 6. Knowing this. Verse 9. Knowing that. Verse 16. Know ye not? Paul, Paul's, Paul's teaching here, man. Paul knows you, you, in fact, in verse, look at verse 19, he said, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Mm -hmm. Paul knows your flesh. Paul is a man like you are. You don't think he understood what it was to have flesh? And he's speaking here, he, he's not telling them, man, oh, yeah, if you're truly saved, you won't sin. I've heard that stuff. <laughs> or, yeah, I've heard this stuff, man. What Paul's telling them here is, is the question was, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul said, God forbid. Now he's going to use what the cross did to argue against that philosophy. Do you not know? Look at verse 2. Here's your new relationship to sin. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? That's my relationship to sin now, Bill. Yes, sir. Look at verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? What does that mean? Verse 6, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Well, I don't feel free. You know. What Paul's showing you is your position. And he, this is your new reality. You're free from sin. Look, look at verse 14. Sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. As a Christian, let me tell you what you can forget. You can forget sin and you can forget the law. Because you're not under either one of them. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Go home and get on your this morning and thank God for Calvary Amen. that freed me from sin and the law and gave me grace and peace with God. Amen. Now if you want to live this morning, this is how you're going to live. Alright, he, he says over in verse uh, chapter 7 and verse number 4, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law 
by the body of Christ. <laughs> you see in your relationships, I'm dead to sin. Over in Galatians, he said, I'm crucified under the world. I'm dead to the world. I don't need the world's wisdom. Hey Amen. I've got, I've, man, the world couldn't catch me traveling at the speed of light, Gary, in the next 1,500 years. <laughs> I'm so far ahead of the world, I, I, I don't even want to look back and see what they're doing. <laughs> I mean, honest to goodness, I don't need it. <coughs> sin, I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to my old man. I'm dead to the law, but I'm alive unto God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And it, it's all these new relationships to the world, to sin, to the old man, to the law. I'm dead to those things that I might live unto God through Christ. I can't live unto God through the world. I can't live unto God through sin. I can't live unto God through the old man. I can't live unto God through the law. I can only live unto God through the Spirit. But I can't live by the Spirit as long as I put myself under bondage to these things. And this is what Paul's talking about. And ignorance of this causes a man to continue to, to work in a system that does not work. Look at Romans, look at, look at chapters, Romans 7, 14 through 25. This is not Paul, this is not Paul giving us an excuse to be weak Christians the rest of our life. What Paul's showing here is what happens to a Christian when he puts himself back under the law. The law cannot give righteousness, the law cannot give life. All the law can do is condemn. That's all God gave it for. It's called the ministration of condemnation and death. The only reason God gave us His law was to condemn us. And so what Paul's showing here now is that when we put ourselves back under the law, the only thing that's going to happen is we're going to say, Oh, wretched man that I am! Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? But he comes down in the chapter 8 and verse 1 and says, There is therefore now no condemnation. To them which are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. God, through Calvary, y'all read the verse, through Calvary, He took all the ordinances that was against me and contrary to me and nailed them to His cross and took Him, took them out of my way. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's nothing left for me to transgress. But what Paul tells Peter, he says... He says, if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. And what he means by that, if I start putting those things back in my life that God has removed, yeah. I bring myself under condemnation. Amen. Not before God, but in my heart. And now this affects my peace. And you've got to understand what Paul, when he says that, he said, if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. He said, for I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. He said, I am, here, watch the relationship, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I don't live by this, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. If righteousness came by the law, Christ is dead in vain. Yeah. Righteousness comes from Christ removing these things Amen. so that we can live unto God by the Spirit. Amen. And this is what Paul's talking about in Romans chapter 8. When we understand our relationship to all these other things, he says in Romans 8, 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. This law of God brought you in bondage to the law of sin and death. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ. See, we we're joined to a new body. When I was married to this old man, there was a law of sin in this flesh. When I got joined to the body of Christ, there's a new law operating in His body. It's called the law of the Spirit of life. And that law of Christ can free me from the law of sin and death in my flesh. And this is what Paul's talking about here. 
Amen. And ignorance of it, folks, it, it, it'll, it, it'll, it'll keep you under bondage to sin. You take ease. I'm going to close here with this. We'll pick up. We're going to go through Romans. Uh, we're going to briefly go through Romans and talk about Paul's gospel. But I, 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 want, I want you to get this, man. Galatians 5, 19 through 21, the works of the flesh, that was written to a legalist church. And what Paul's telling them there. As he says, brethren, you've been called unto liberty. God's freed you. Mm -hmm. And by putting yourselves back under the law, what you're doing is putting yourself back under the bondage of sin. The law, there was nothing wrong with the law, folks. The reason it's called a yoke of bondage is because the law gives power to sin. Paul says that in 1 Corinthians. He said the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But you've been called unto liberty. Not liberty to sin. Liberty to live righteous. The law did not give you liberty to be righteous. It gave you bondage to sin. It's the Spirit of God that gives us liberty to live righteously. And that's what Paul said. He said, so if you do these things, he said the works of the flesh are manifest, man. Fornication, adultery, lasciviousness, uncleanness. Wrath, sedition, heresy, strife, envies, murders, drunkenness. I see them. I see them everywhere, man. Look, look, man, I tell you all the time, go kid your grandma. You ain't kidding me. <laughs> Amen. Go kid Shelton Smith and them boys. Amen. Go get a, listen, you can kid them. You, you, you want to kid them? Get a haircut, put on a suit and a tie, and go pass out gospel tracts and knock doors, and they'll think you're God's blessing to the earth. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. And I, I'll, I'll tell you, man, listen, I don't know who these men think they are or they're not, Brother Bill. God's gift to this world was Jesus Christ. And if He's not formed in you, you ain't nobody. No. Right. And if He is formed in you, then He is everything. Amen? Neither Jew nor Greek, man. Christ is all in all. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. And so next, next week we're going to point out, we're going to come to Romans chapter 1. We ain't going to spend a lot of time in Paul's condemnation. Verse uh, 18 to chapter 3, verse 20. I think we all know that, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all understand that aspect of it. But there are a few things in Romans 1, Romans chapter 2. Uh, if you want to know how to deal with the self-righteous man, Romans chapter 2 gives you that. Verses 1 through 6. If you want to, uh, we, we are going to look a little bit at Romans 1, the, the fall of the Gentiles, what, what brought the Gentiles to falling, the, the threefold path that caused them to fall away. God didn't, God didn't make them do anything. He gave them up. They chose their own way. Yeah. And man without the wisdom of God, when he goes his own way, it always ends in destruction and failure. Sure. And what God has shown man from Adam all the way, that no matter what conditions he gives man, no matter what dispensation he gives him, no matter what government or what, what he does, when man turns from the wisdom of God, it always ends in destruction and misery. God's, God's going to bring it all to a head one day and say, without me, you can't do nothing. And He's going to bring the whole world under subjection to Him. Amen. And so next week, we'll start looking at the condemnation. Romans is a wonderful book, man, when you truly understand it. Amen. Let's pray.